Hi everyone, I'm Jen from the Edmonton Public Library. Today, we're going to explore a book called Pink is for Blobfish. This one's by Jess Keating with the illustrations by David DeGrant. Do you think you know pink? Well, think again. Pink is for blobfish. This little guy is a gelatinous goo and he just gulps food down when he sees it. He doesn't even need to do anything. He was also voted the world's ugliest animal. Poor little guy. I think he's kind of cute actually. Pink is for pink toe tarantulas. Have any of you seen tarantulas before? They look pretty friendly, right? Do, do, do. You can find them in pet stores, but it's much harder to find them in the wild. Pink is for orchid mantises. Those look an awful lot like flowers, don't they? They stand out against green leaves, um, but they can actually be pretty, pretty dangerous where they can suck up any of their prey that comes close to them. Or they can have a sub sandwich, depending on what they're in the mood for. Pink is for pygmy seahorses. They hide in plain sight, nestled amongst the pink coral of the ocean floor. They're extremely fragile and scuba divers have to be very careful around them. Now, did you know that seahorses actually have the dads have the babies? They have a little pouch on their stomach and that's where the eggs are and then it just hatches off of their stomach. They're good dads. Pink is for rosate spoonbills. They, some animals aren't born pink. When baby spoonbills hatch, they're chubby and covered in downy white feathers. But as they grow, their feathers turn various shades of pink because of all the pigment in the shrimp that they eat. Hmm. So does that mean if I ate a lot of blueberries, I would turn blue? Let's try that. Let's find out. Pink is also for Amazon River Dolphins. They're intelligent, as all dolphins are, and they have extremely complex ways of hunting. They work together in a group to drive fish near the shore, like a pack of dogs, hoarding sheep. Then when the fish are stranded close to the land, the dolphins can enjoy a nice big fishy feast together. Pink is for pink fairy armadillos. Oh, he looks kind of cozy, doesn't he? Hmm. You won't find these creatures in a fairy tale though. They're very real and very hard to find. They're not seen all that often by people in the wild. I don't know if you can tell, but they also have really big claws. So you probably don't want to get in their way. Pink is for southern blind snakes. All this, although this creature looks like an earthworm, you won't find it in your backyard. Unless your backyard is Australia, that is. They use their thick scales and hard scales to burrow deep into the earth, slithering through the soil to find food. Pink is for Hopkins Rose Nudibranch. Oh, I've never seen those before. Interesting. They kind of look like they're made from bubble gum, but don't let that fool you. They are really a sea snail that doesn't have a shell on top of them. Instead, they have several finger-like projections that wave freely through the ocean currents. Oh, these are my favorite. Pink is for naked mole rats. Hmm. They're eusocial rodents. That means that they work as a team to survive with some digging tunnels and finding foods while other are defending against attacks. Um, a fun fact about these, in addition to eating some things like tubers, they also eat their own poo and they get the nutrients out of that. That sounds delicious, doesn't it? Pink is for pink sea stars. They have hundreds of sticky tube feet on their arms, allowing them to cling to rocks on the ocean floor while they wait for prey. A fun fact about them, if they can't fit something in their mouth, 
they can basically have their mouth come out, digest the food, and then go back into them. That sounds like it's troubleshooting right there. Pink is for hippopotamuses. They spend several, they long days in some of the hottest parts of the world. And with these guys, the pink part is an oil that comes out onto their skin and sort of acts like sunscreen, so they don't get burned. That just sounds smart. Pink is for sea slugs. Hmm. They have lots of types of mucus uh, that comes out and keeps them from slipping on surfaces. It's also excreted all over their body, protecting it from predators. It's very hard to pick up a slimy slug. And also, would you really want to? Pink is for pink land iguanas. They're large reptiles that live on a single isolated volcano in the small island of the Galapagos. And they are pretty close to extinct as well. Pink is for dragon millipedes. Some insects wear pink to blend in, but the dragon millipede wants to stand out. By sporting hot pink, he's saying, stay away, I'm dangerous. You don't want to take a bite of him because he has hydrogen cyanide that comes from his body if you try to. Yuck. Pink is for red eucharis. They're monkeys that leap from branch to branch and the healthier this monkey is, the brighter pink his face will be. That's also a way to let his mates know that he's ready to find a, find a mate. Pink is for hairy squat lobsters. Talk about a bad hair day. These little guys have purple spots and yellow hairs all over their bodies. I think he's kind of cute. And that was a whole bunch of pink animals. We have a map here of the world where you can find all of them. And there's lots of facts and definitions in this book too. If you wanna learn more about Jess Keating and her other books, um, underneath this video, there'll be a link to her website where there's lots of cool activities you can do. And if you want to find more great content on EPL, you can go to epl.ca slash EPL from home. Thanks for listening today, everyone. Summer Starts at EPL is coming. All throughout summer, kids will read, participate in fun activities and win prizes. But don't feel left out, grown-ups. We have a summer reading program for you too. Summer Reads is our adult version, and there's something for readers of all ages this summer at EPL.